everyone. This is Robin in our VIP group, which I don't think I've ever gone live in before, but I thought I'd try it today and uh, get some of you on live with me, or you can watch the replay and make comments. Um, I always have a lot of other Chocotour designers on my regular page when I go live, and I thought this would give you just a chance to be just a one-on-one -on -one or with you and me in here in the VIP page. So say hello if you're watching. And basically I just like to have conversation with you while I craft and chalk. So um, if you have any questions, just let me know. I thought I'd share with you a fun little project with these snails that I got in the Target dollar bin. And I just got them the other day and they were half price already. So they were $3. I got them for $1.50. They're made out of cardboard. And I painted them and chalked on them for a cute little gift. So yeah, say hello, hello. I know there's some of you out there watching. And I'd love to just visit with you while I chalk. Let me know how things are going. Like I said, usually I'm on my regular page. But I thought I'd give you a little one-on-one -on -one with just my customers. Or people who've been to my um, classes so um, yeah I found these cute little snails at Target in the dollar spot area up front and they were half price so I only got them for a dollar fifty they're made of cardboard they're super lightweight and I actually just I bought oh I don't know maybe eight six or eight and I thought they'd make cute little gifts but this one I did a home sweet home on it and I just painted them I'm gonna finish painting this one. First I painted in white, and I like to use my raw silk color infusion mineral paint. That's just because it has a uh, primer and a sealer in the paint all in one. This is a specialty paint you usually have to get from specialty stores, like stores that, re that repaint furniture or vendors. You can go on their website, Fusion Mineral Paint, and you can look up a closest retailer near you. If you have trouble with that, the shop that I sell my Odessa Rose Creates is in uh, Valley, Nebraska, and they do sell it, and I believe Amy will ship it. So if you really, really want some and you can't get anything local, uh, give her a call out there. It's The Attic in Valley, Nebraska. They have a Facebook page with their phone number on it. So otherwise, you can just use craft paint. I just like it, it's a good coverage, and like I said, it already has that uh, primer and sealer in it. So, then I just used craft paint in a green, and I just used the same brush, I just put it in water, and I just kind of watercolor that craft paint on here, so it's not really super solid. It has just a fun little texture to it, highs and lows, hues of the greens. And then I'm going to do this in pink, and we'll do that right now. So this one I already did in like a teal blue and a coral. And then you see where it's darkened? Those That's done with the uh, Distressed Ink. So we'll do that to the pink one. And then I um, silk screened on the pattern in the Home Sweet Home. And right now I'm debating about eyes. I was looking at um, snail art on on images and some of them have their eyes up on their like antennas and some have their faces down here so i was going to put a couple eyes on but now I, i'm debating on should they be up here or should they be down here with a little smile i thought would be cute but i don't want to be uh incorrect on where they should be but i've seen art with both positions so i don't know which way i want to go I'm kind of leaning towards two dots down here and maybe a little smile like he's turning sideways. So let me know what you guys think about that. Because I don't know. I've never have drawn snails before. So I'm not sure what to do with them. All right. I'm going to I have a, like a really bright pink. It is called bright pink in folk art. And then I have a rose pink. And I kind of want something in between. So I might be blending the colors a little bit uh, on my um, snail's shell here. Is that what you call them? Shells? I guess. I don't even know. OK, 
Okay, so in my water, it already is kind of white from the, um, actually I did all the colors in with this, but it's mostly white, so I'm, I'm okay. If it was a really dirty color, it might be okay with this bright pink because I kind of want to tone it down a little bit, but it's got some glue on there. I just put a teeny dab, and this brush is wet, just a dot of it on, and start swirling it around. And you can see, it's, I think it's very psychedelic, a little bit more than I care to have. So I'm gonna dab it on my paper towel. I'm gonna add some of the um, rose pink. I'm gonna actually kind of wash that out of my brush. I don't mind if it has the bright undertones, but I think I wanna just tone it down a little bit. So I'm gonna put on some mauve, or they called it uh, rose pink. So, although the green is very neon, so probably not gonna matter too much. And the, like I said, it's very wet. And I did note that snails kind of, shells kind of swirl. So I'm actually giving it a swirl effect. And I always try to not have uh, uh, brush strokes. And I don't know why, it went clear out here on his head. I'm gonna wipe that off wipes off pretty good. I'm no artist, but I like to craft, so we'll see how we go here. Okay. So again, I'm just going to swirl it in a circle. Okay, and I'm just gonna dry it. I'm using a craft heat gun, but you can use a blow dryer. And uh, it, it's just pretty hot, so you wanna stay away from it, not get too close. Uh, but it's just quieter than a hair dryer, as far as being on camera. So that is why I'm using a heat gun. is somewhat dry, It'll start to dry a little bit. And then I'm going to pick it up and do the top. And basically with this wet brush, you're kind of watercoloring slash staining. It's not really a solid paint. I can still see the white through it, which I like. I'm okay with that. And I'm going to add just a little bit more paint to my brush. So if you're just joining, we're painting some snails. I got them unfinished. They're cardboard at Target. They were three dollars the other day. I got them for a dollar fifty. I had. Um, I had two or four in my hand, and when I saw they were half price, I went back and got the rest of them. Because I think they'd be super fun for kids to do. I'm just giving that snail shell swirl. That's my brush. Okay, and then we'll blow dry it. Say hi for watching. I know there's a few of you on. Don't be shy, say hello to me. I'm just crafting. What better to do when you're at home than craft? In my in my world anyway.
said, this is the first time I've gone live in my VIP group. Usually I'm crafting on my regular page. And I get a lot of people watch me on there. Most of them are other chocolate tour designers. So I thought I would share this little, this little craft with you guys today. All right, so we have them painted. I, pri I kind of primed them first with my Fusion Mineral Paint, but you can just use any white paint or any, if you want to go black and use more darker tones, go black underneath or brown or whatever. But I think it's best to put a little bit of a paint first before you do the water coloring because you, you don't want to do that right on the paper probably. So, okay, so I kind of wanted them, I'm going to put the same, um, I'm going to do the exact same patterns on this one just to show you. But I'm going to have them so they're kind of crossing each other's paths, okay? So we're going to go that way. I didn't do it on this side. I may end up doing it on both sides. That way if you're sitting on a table or someplace that you want to see both sides, he's he's still pretty on the side. He just doesn't have the sentiment on there. But uh, So um, I'm using a couple different transfers. This... These two transfers are out of our uh, Bohemian, is that what they're called? Oh, right here. Um, oh, these are called Border Variety. There's a bunch of different borders in the package. The big package, you get a lot of different ones. But I love these patterns. And they kind of really go with the snail, and I love how the arch just goes right with his shell. And then I took the Home Sweet Home out of this other this is an also a big pattern this is this transfer was designed to go with our house cutouts but there's lots of different little patterns in there and sayings one is love makes our house a home so anyway i took this out of there and i'm going to use it on the snail right under his little arch of boho vibe there uh, before I do that, I actually distressed it, and that's by using, it's called Distressed Ink. You'll find this in the craft stores near the scrapbooking supplies, and it's just a little ink pad, and you can buy these little dabbers, whoops, and you just distress it or make it dirty, vintage it, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did that around the edges here. I also kind of did it, try to make it look or highlight the swirl in his shell um you can see it right there kind of so i'm kind of going to do the edges and then try to do a kind of a swirl in there effect with it and that just kind of kind of gives it a nice finish makes just instead of just being paint kind of makes it look a little bit more finished look to it and i'm going to use the dark stain walnut stain i do have it in like a blue, a red, a green. I actually might use a little bit of green. And I believe a gray. This little set of four colors came in one packet. And then uh, there is other little sets of different colors, including the walnut stain you can get in the set of four of these little ones. But let's just put a little green on it and see what that looks like. I already have some brown probably in this stamp. So... Not gonna matter too much. Let's see what it looks like. The green is really, really great. I used on a birdhouse to give it kind of a mossy feeling. And that was kind of a good time to use the green. I'm just kind of going around the edge of this shell here. And then I'm gonna try to highlight the swirl. More like low light with the darker color, but okay. And I'm gonna keep going around the edge just to define his shadow a little bit. This is called Distressed Ink. It's by Tim Holtz. And a lot of people use it in card making or scrapbooking, like on the edges of their paper to distress the and antique the look a little bit. Let's 
same idea, but we're doing it on the, either, I also use it on my signs, uh, if I want a distressed look. I'm just kind of hitting it with the brown or the green. So say hi. Usually I have people watch and chalk walking and chalking and talking to me um, when I'm on my regular page. But I thought I'd just do it here on the VIP group just to see if I can say hello to some other people for a change. And then we're going to do some chalking. Got his edges defined a little bit. Put that away, and then I might hit it with the dryer just a little bit more, and then we'll chop. glass of water out of the way and paint out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna take the sex this middle section of this transfer. This was in our border variety and we're gonna place it up here across the top of its shell just like we did with this one. Gonna just pretty her up a little bit. I think that would be fun. And we put those little dots right on the edge. Like that. As close to it as I can. On this one, I did not do this very bottom section right there. I'm gonna not do that area so I have room for the home to set up inside it, okay? So I'm just, this is sticky on this side, so it kind of sticks to your surface. So I'm just making sure that all the air pockets are out. I'm gonna just block this with my fingers so I remember not to chalk it. And I'm gonna put it in my black paste here. Okay, just a little bit on my squeegee. And just apply it. So you're just squeegeeing the chalk paste over the silk screen and the transfer. And once you get it all covered, you kind of skim it down, take all the extra paste off, and put it back in your jar. Just like that. Then you 
lift up your transfer and you've got your print on there. Okay. And we're going to want that to dry and we'll put in the home sweet home. And then I added these little extra loops here on the side just to finish it off a little bit. So I have a pan of water down here because our transfers are reusable. So I just wash them in water, let them dry and put them back on their backer sheet paper. Hi, Sharon. Do you wax your surface before putting a transfer on? It depends on what the surface is. I didn't on these. I find, and also depends on how sticky my transfers are. The newer transfers are not as sticky as the older transfers. So I find I don't have much problem with it. But um, if it was on paper, definitely would wax the paper first because you don't want that paper sticking to the sticky side of your transfer and ruining it. But here, I, I really don't need to. They're not that sticky and um, I had put my primer paint, primer paint and uh, sealer all on first, and then I just kind of water, watercolored in some craft paint. And I really don't have any problem. Um, like I said, if it was a transfer I bought, you know, a couple years ago, and they were extra sticky, I would have uh, waxed it first. So that's a good question, but I didn't on these. I'm just drying it. Let's put in our home sweet home. And I've used these several times. Otherwise, always, if they are brand new, it doesn't hurt to take a terry cloth towel and press it down or even on your shirt and get a little bit of fuzz on the back. That just helps them be less sticky and you're able to pick them up easier. So I'm going to put this on here. Right in the center of that. Just kind of making sure it's straight across the bottom. Looks pretty good. And just making sure there's no air pockets. And apply some more black chalk paste. Our paste can last forever, as long as you don't allow it to dry out and get hard. If you're not using your paste for a while, you might want to go through it and get it watered down and blended back to smooth so it doesn't dry out. Okay, so we're just going to pick this one up. Okay, I'll put that in my water. that dry and then I'm going to add these two little trim pieces on here off of this piece of transfer but we got to make sure this is dry first make sure that's dry because we're going to be putting this near it and if it was wet it would smear it so we want to make sure it's dry and I'm just going to line this right along here section and then we'll do that section just for fun there's no real reason why I'm doing it other than just to finish it off a little bit This side. And same thing. that 
dry. And I probably am going to wax them just to give them a little bit, because when the wax dries, it's a furniture wax. So when it dries, it hardens everything. And I think just because these are paper, I think to have them a little bit harder will um, give them a nice finish. Okay, so while that one dries, we'll start with this one. I'm going to clean up my paste. I always scrape down the insides of the jar and try to get them down inside with the, with the rest of the paste. And then we wash our stir stick, we'll wash our squeegees. And since that's getting a little thick, I'm just going to squirt a little bit of water in there. It's best to use distilled water. And then I'm just going to put that away. And I'm going to go ahead and use, since I've already distressed it with the ink, I'm going to go ahead and use the special dark uh, wax paste. And like I said, this is made for furniture and wood, but it actually seals in our chalk and will make the whole surface hard. So I like to use that on my signs that I'm selling and um, things like that. So any more questions? question from my other page. So I'm just applying this with the rag and just, you know, rubbing it all over. And since it is stained, it does slightly darken everything a little bit, but not too much. Which is, I want it to do that, so. And then it also, like I said, will harden that chalk paste and seal it in. I don't know if you could finish your pieces with wax. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can. I do all the time. You can watch a lot of my videos. are all on my Odessa Rose page under videos. Videos I've made or videos of Facebook Lives. The replays. And like I said, I almost finished everything. Unless it's a chalkboard that I want to redesign on. Like you want to wash off the chalk paste because it is washable. And so a lot of our nice like chalkboards, especially the ones from Chalk Couture, I don't seal those in because I want to wash it off and recreate it for another season maybe. But if it's a painted sign, um, and sometimes I'll paint my signs black and sometimes I'll paint them white, whatever. If it's something I'm going to sell, then I seal it in and make the surface hard with wax. Unless it's an outdoor item, um, then you want to use the outdoor polyurethane. But I haven't done too many outdoor items. Maybe some porch boards, but um, most of my stuff's for inside. So I just waxed it all and then, you know, I don't know how long it takes to actually dry and get hard. I'm sure 24 hours. I've never really paid attention. I just do it and then, you know, let it be. Uh, I'm going to read here on the thing if it tells me. You just want to put on a thin coat evenly um, and then you kind of just rub it in. And the wax produces a hard, dry, oilless, oilless finish. But it doesn't really say how long. It just probably, you know, you allow it to dry 10 to 15 minutes and then you can buff it. But I usually just rub it in, you know, nice and thin and then I just let it go. I just let it be, let it set, and then it'll harden. Okay. All right. So there's that one. And then I'm just going to make sure this is dry. I'll 
also, if you're using, I it's best to use cool air, like out of a hair dryer, because then you, you kind of want to wait till this cools down if it got too warm before you put your wax on. But this is what we started out with, guys, if you're just joining me. These little cardboard snails were at the Target bin. And so that's where I picked them up. I painted it white first. It's called Ross. It's a little off-white, but I like to use Fusion Mineral Paint because it's a sealer, uh, primer, paint, and sealer all in one. But you can just use any white paint. Or if you want a darker undertone, paint it brown or paint it black. And then I kind of watercolor on with craft paints, just your typical craft paint with a very wet brush. So the undertone color kind of shows through. And then I distress the edges with distressed ink. And those, the big pad you have to order through Amazon, but you can get little pads, different colors at your local craft store and they come in packages of four different colors and there's different sets of those uh, I like to use the walnut stain plus I put some green on this one and then you can just they also you can buy these little stamp stampers and they have replacement pads if you if they get old and worn out then you can replace them and I'm sealing I have a natural wax and I also have a dark stained wax it's called special dark by minwax it's for furniture and i use both it just depends on what the look is i want if i want it to be a little dingy or a little vintagey then i'll put this dark wax on and even if i wax this side now and i decide to add chalk silk screen on it i can go ahead and silk screen on top of the chalk or on top of the wax paste too and then seal it again after it's dry. So um, it doesn't matter if I am doing this now and I decide, oh wait, I wanted to do the back side. I can still do the back side. Cause you can pretty much chalk on any flat surface, any surface. You just gotta have the right prep for it and make sure you fudge your transfers, especially if it's glass or metal, the transfer sticky transfers really stick to those surfaces really well so you just gotta pay attention to what you're sticking it to okay guys so we got two of our snails done just like that cool cool i think these will be cute little pick me up get i'm trying to decide about the eyes i looked up snails like drawings of snails or snail art and some have their eye here and a mouth some have their eyes up here on the antennas. Um, but I don't I don't really like that look. <laughs> I don't know if their eyes really are on their antennas. I suppose maybe they don't even have eyes. They probably just feel with their antennas. But I think I'll just put a couple eyes here and, and a little mouth. And I'll just draw that on with a Sharpie. But I'll have to wait till my wax gets hard before I do that. Another thing I can show you real quick is these are little, the little kits I've been advertising here in the uh, group and the VIP group. And I'm selling these at a really good discount price. Like, cause these normally just the board and base retail for $7.99 and our little size A transfers retail for $9.99. And I believe I'm selling them for $15. Then there's tax and shipment, which comes to about $23, I think it is. Um, but still, that's that's a really good deal because you're getting shipping. And I'm also going to be giving you a ribbon and little embellishments, whether it's a flower or a little tag or something to go with the design. And this is one I have a sample of. It's called Hey There Cupcake. So I have different ones, and there's a video I have on my page. I have the I'm not adulting now. I got it from my mama, which is a cut apart. It's got different uh, hearts you can put with it. The chill out popsicle, uh, a baseball one, this cute little lamb. I love you more, E-W-E -E, more. And there's hey there cupcake. I have one of each of these. Uh, awkward sense forever. This cute graduation. Um, or for a kid to do, um, you got this as a good graduation too. Actually, I can is another good graduation. 
Now these kits would be good gifts, or you could make the sign and give it as a gift. Uh, when in doubt, add glitter. I think that's another cool one for graduation for a girl. Uh, I have mixed drinks about feelings. That's a little uh, like margarita drink. Uh, don't quit your daydreams. Everything is possible. Another great graduation sentiment. And then this one is TGIF. This grandma is fabulous. Okay. So in your kit, you're also going to get two packets of paste like these. You're going to get two of these. So you can do your project in two colors and you're also going to get the little mini squeegee. So in your kit, you're going to have paste, squeegee, ribbon, and a trinket to put on it, and the board and base, and your transfer. So with the, all the product, tax, and shipping comes to $23. So that's a cute, cute gift at a great price. So I thought I would do one real quick for you. I got the chill out, and I have the, I got it from my mama. If you want to say which one you want me to do, just write it in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just going to do one real quick. And so see, some, some sentiments go this way, right? And some have to go up and down, like the cupcake. And so these boards can flip in either way. All right, and actually you can design on both sides if you want to, also. So, I think I'm gonna do, I got it from my mama. And actually you could probably go either direction with that, with that one. Cause you can add the hearts wherever you want. So let's just lay it out. Sure, Sharon, no problem. So I'm just gonna open this up real quick. And let's pick out a couple colors. Um, let's see. I already get those kind of colors. Let's find something different. And let's do like eucalyptus or something. There's like C4. And let's do white. Okay. This way or this way? We got three different hearts. We could use just the one would be cute. Let's do this one and then we could tie on some ribbon to match. So this is, I got it from my mama. And you always kind of want to up just a little bit higher then the center, because when you put it in the board, it drops down a little bit, okay? So I probably didn't need to go this high, but I wanted to show you that you do want to raise it up a little bit higher than center. So you allow for the drop in. Okay, so I'm going to do, I got it in Mama in the green, and then the white from my and then um, I'll do the little heart in the same color. So. All right. So I'm trying not to do the from my, because I'm going to do that in the white, so I'm bypassing that. I did the, I did do the line above it in the green, seafoam green. take my little tool and do this part in white. You could also take off your transfer, wash it, and lay it back on after you after the chalk paste dries and then apply the white. 
if you want to, but if you got a little tool like this, you can get it all done at the same time. Okay, we're gonna lift up our transfer. Okay, there it is. And we'll want that to dry. And then we'll put on a heart, a couple hearts. Just blow drying it so the chalk paste dries real quick. And like I said, we have three hearts, so I might put one here and one here for sure. We'll do them in white. This one. I'm gonna fuzz it. It did pick up a little bit on my green, so not quite dry. And we'll do this heart. I'm just going over the transfer with the paste and pick it up. There, got it from my mama. And I'm gonna get some ribbon and we'll put some ribbon on that. And then I will make, whoever buys that I got it from my mama, I will make them a little, like a little charm or something to hang on like I did on this one here. So, but I just wanted to show you how to chalk that real quick. But just like this one, we would put a ribbon, some ribbon and twine around it and uh, either get a flower or a little charm. I'll make something and, and tie that on there. So yeah, that's what the little uh, current kits I have available right now in this group for my customers. And I have, if you watch the little video on them, I have, I think, close to 10 different transfers you can get. So you're gonna get the transfer, the board and base, two colors of chalk paste in their little packets, which look like this. Pick out the colors for you. And you're gonna get a little squeegee. And you'll get the ribbon and the trim. So you're gonna get all that for $15 plus tax and shipping, which comes to around $23. So super uh, cute kits to give as a gift to a graduation person. I have some that are perfect sayings for graduates or you can make the sign and give it to them. And then you can reuse that transfer again and again. So if you got on my webpage, you could order more of these, get some ribbon and whatnot, and make a lot of them for graduation. If you have a lot of different girls maybe, even boys, you can make like a, you got this, that type of thing. Um, and so they're cute to put in their like dorm room or in their apartment when they move out. So, or in their current room. So those are just some ideas, but uh, today, if you go back and watch the replay, we finished off the snail, which is a cardboard snail that we got at Target in the dollar spot and painted them and then chalked on them to make cute little sayings. I like to, I'm gonna try to find a little saying for like a, a girl, like I wanna make one for Vivian, my granddaughter. I think she would like that. But I thought it was cool because the snail, uh, the shell is their home. So like home sweet home. It's kind of cool. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for talking with me. If you have any questions, uh, just shoot me a message and I'll be glad to help you out. Bye. Talk with you later.